the general perception is that this is a dead rubber, but I think for management and players, it's it's absolutely not the case. There's a huge amount at stake. And I think if, if Waterford don't produce, you know, a performance this Sunday, you know, for both management and players, I think a lot of them won't return. Yeah. Do you, and Sean, do you expect there to be a kick from Waterford or like, look, they, they lost very handsomely against Clare, 222 to 16 points. Fair enough, there was the, the red card and Caleb Lyons kind of added to his own issues by getting that first yellow card, getting involved, even though it was harmless enough. Do you expect Watford to have a kick this weekend or do you expect them to fall up the tents? I don't know. Like, my father's from Watford. them up last year against Clare in, in yeah. the Park. Yeah. My father's from Watford. So I used, I've gone to as many Watford games as a child. I used to go see Brian there and you'd meet his uh, his brother uh, Liam and you'd meet uh, Mark, his nephew there at the games. And, but like, I just feel that Davy has made him like, to, he, there's no manliness about the way they're playing. Like, it's all kind of pushing out and you know, trying to get free, and it just feels like when you're tr- like the way they're trying to play it, it's just no. I, I don't know what brain things, but there's just no manliness about it in terms of like it's all kind of systemy, and you know, that's our stuff. I like you just want you just want your players to plow into the game and, and go hard, like, and even this thing of clearing out their full back line for puck outs. And she is like, if I was tipped the weekend, I'd tell Mark, yo, don't bother follow one of the full back line. And stand in on the 21 and call their bluff. And if they want to go out the field, let them off. But you stay inside. But, like, it's just the, some of the things, even when they got the man sent off the last day, like the next puck out, it was a 2v1. To clear two lads inside their the Watford 45. And Watford only won back. So I don't know what's going on. For all, like, this, what their, you know, systems and what they're practicing, like, I just think they need to, and I don't know, Brian might know better than me, but, like, you know yourself, you involved with teams. I was managing a team and before we were going bad. And some of the senior players just said, Hold on there, you wait outside dressing room for 10 minutes. We're we're gonna we're gonna look after this ourselves now. Do you know? And I, I just think there needs to be an element of that that the players just need to go, look, we need to go back to what we we do and we do best. And like we were haven't been too far away in the last couple of years. And you know, one bad result maybe against Cork last year. And it probably knocked the stuff out of him a bit, but I just think there has to be a there has to there just has to be something in in Watford the weekend. And but I don't know where they're going to get it from doing what they've done in the first three games. I think players need to lock the dressing room themselves and go. Let's we're going out and doing something that we want to do, or you know, or even just I just I just think it's very very. I just don't. I just think there's more in them, but I just feel they're like it's just like they have a new surrounder. They're nick like they're not just not able to express themselves like they, they they usually were able to in the last couple of years. I don't know what Brian thinks. Yeah, Brian, we take up that point in terms of like, is there a lack of manliness in how they're playing and, and the tactics? Yeah, God, I don't know. I'm going to sound like Brian Cody or that. I mean, you know, the game is still the game. It it it's um look, I'm sitting on a height looking down at all these matches and I can't work it out what's and even at times now the Waterford stats guys and stuff would be, be sitting behind us and you'd be, you know, you'd be just wondering what they're looking down and seeing and they're, they're maybe worrying about the wrong things. At the end of the day, you know, you you got to get your best players on the ball as often as possible. you got to, you got to create chances. you got to create scores. Um, I don't think any tactical genius or guru sitting in the stand or on the sideline, you know, can really orchestrate that, 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 they're going. They're going to win. Win the game as opposed to the players. Um, I think somewhere along the line, though, you know, and and in fairness, there's very little coming out of the camp, or there's very little disquiet from from that point of view. Uh, you know, you get the the vibes that yeah, look, they're, they're happy with the the setup and they're happy with all that side of it. I'm not sure how happy they can be with with the the tactical approach that that's been employed. Um, it's very difficult to see, you know, where where you're going with that but I think you have to strip it back at some you know when things aren't going well you do have to strip it back somewhere along the line you know even personal pride has got to kick in you know as I said no player goes out to to play poorly or or you know as, as some of the performances really just haven't been up to it but they've got to find something this weekend you know you, I, I, I don't think it's it's I don't think they can survive another performance where they don't fire a shot. They don't um, attack the opposition. And 
you know, look, we we want for teams in general, you know, maybe it's it's a bit of a cliche, but they're probably our best when they're playing off the cuff, when they're when they're attacking teams, they're going for it. Um and, and as I said, invariably it, it gives you a chance in the game. I just don't think they've they've given themselves a chance uh in the game so far. Um in hindsight, when you look back at the opening game, you know, it was it was before it you're saying, yeah, look, you'd be fearful, but at the end of the day, Limerick were down to 14 men for minutes. They missed the penalty. That was an opportunity that Waterford should have won the game. Had to take um, but I just think there's there's a huge amount at stake. Uh, and as I said, look, I think everybody down in the southeast is is desperate for you know something to hang your hat on to take into next year that you can say, well, look, there is a bit of a, a, a light there. We can see what's what they're trying to do. What's you know maybe where the future is. Um, and there is just, I mean, look, there's no point in saying otherwise. There, there's a huge area of negativity because of where I suppose Watford are at a, a, from an underage point of view. And, um, you know, as mad as it sounds, the, the senior team is probably the, the team I'm I'm least concerned about. You know, when you look through it, you know, your Connor Pronties, Austin Gleese and Jamie Byrne, these are all All-Stars. Callum Lyons, All-Star nominee. Desi Hutchinson, multiple All-Star nominee. You know, Jack Prendergast, they're good hurlers. You know, they, there's... There's something there that they've they've got to find their best form. Um, they've had a couple of weeks that they, they took a few days off after the last game. You'd like to think they're coming into the game fresh. You'd like to think that they've, I suppose, you know, shaken the the fog from the cowan as such, um, and that they're, you know, that they are going to to go up to to Simple Stadium and and really produce something, um, because otherwise it's it's you know it can't be a case that. You know, bags are packed and they're they're planning on holidays and you know hurling in America for the summer. Or that um, I think they're the you know in fairness to Jersey, their county deserves deserves more than that.